Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 236, I want to talk about making the business case. How do you make the business case for investments in business continuity, crisis management, or crisis communications? How do you get your executives to buy in to the investments in resilience you need to make? Now, as I talk about this, I'm not going to talk a lot about resilience because that's not as important as understanding how to make a general business case. I wanna focus on how to get the dollars, the resources, the headcount, the capital and expense you need to move your resilience program forward. And very little of this has to do with making a case for resilience. It's instead about making the case for that investment that you're making. In your case, that investment just happens to be investing in your resilience program. When you're making a compelling business case to senior executives, you need to approach this in a structured way. And you need to, to some extent, take off your resilience leadership hat and put on your business leader hat. I want you to really think about, as you do this, about ideas like strategic alignment, functional ju or financial justification, and risk management, among other factors. So here are eight ways to help you think about and structure and present your business case effectively to senior executives. The first one is one you've heard from me many times. It's that your investment has to align with strategic objectives of your organization. You need to clearly link your proposal to your organization's strategic goals. You have to demonstrate how that investment, the investment that you're making, supports broader business objectives, such as growth or innovation or efficiency or risk mitigation. Number two is you have to clearly articulate what you're asking for and the business need and start with the business need. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? So define the problem or the opportunity here in very precise terms. Explain why now is the time to make this investment and what the consequences of inaction could be. Use data and research to substantiate your claims. And sometimes making comparisons to similar size and scope of organizations in your industry can also help you gain that investment. Number three, then propose your solution. Outline your proposed solution, including how it addresses that identified need or opportunity that you just spoke about. Be clear about what the investment entails, including technology, resources, and processes. And this is a great place to bring in your partners in your corporate finance team to help you articulate that business case and be able to explain the investment in clear terms. Number four is financial analysis and return on investment. Present a detailed financial analysis. Hint, have your finance team help you. You need to outline the cost of your investment, the expected benefits, and you want to quantify these as much as you can where possible, and then a calculation of the return on investment, or ROI. Highlight what payback periods might exist and what long-term financial gains could be there. Now, your company likely has a way in which they expect this investment to be described. For example, my former employer that I left more than 10 years ago didn't use ROI. We used the net present value. So every capital investment we were making had some type of NPV. And I needed my finance team to help me understand what that is. And I needed to be able to explain that as the business leader that was then in front of the executives asking for this investment. So bring your partners in finance along for the ride and have them help you. And when you don't understand something, have them guide you. Number five is one we should all be familiar with in resilience, and that's risk mitigation and assessment. You want to identify the potential risks associated with this investment and how you will manage or mitigate those risks. That demonstrates strong foresight on your part and a proactive approach to risk management. Number six is stakeholder impact and support. You should identify the key stakeholders affected by this investment, including how they're going to benefit from it. You should try to work with them in advance of your actual proposal or presentation and outline any concerns that they have and meet with them to understand any resistance or support and how these can be addressed. You want to be able to demonstrate broad support when you actually go in and ask for the investment as that is one of the best ways to be persuasive in your argument. 
Number seven is what's your timeline for implementation and what do the milestones look like? You want to provide a realistic timeline for the investment's implementation, including your key milestones and deliverables. That helps set expectations and outline a path to realizing the value that you described this investment would provide. And then lastly, you want to talk about evaluation and success metrics. What will the, how will you measure the success of this investment, including specific metrics and benchmarks? And that shows commitment to accountability and continuous improvement. Now, it's fair to say that sometimes investments we're making in the resilience practice domains don't always have a positive return on investment. There's not always a clear net present value. That net present value sometimes is negative. Um, In terms of the financial quantification of benefits, that's okay. Make sure that you're also explaining the key um, qualitative benefits of this investment and make a compelling business case in your presentation for what you're trying to achieve. By following these suggestions, this is how I have been able to uh, realize millions of dollars in investments um, when I worked inside of a company in business continuity, crisis management, global security, uh, global security technologies, and the other things that I was responsible for. You can use this approach to construct a compelling business case and clearly communicate the value of your investment outline and address head-on any potential concerns, and make sure that you're aligned with the strategic direction of your organization. That's it for this episode of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.